So grab some paper out. We're going to do a um, review on chapters 1 through 5. You'll want some paper. Um, this will be a good thing for you to review. There are 13 questions on this that come from the test, or the, the test, 13 questions on the test that come from this, these chapters. Okay? Um, so we'll go over that. Next time we'll do chapters 6 through 10. And the next time, um, 11 through 13, on May 16th, I will give you your review that you can go over. And um, hopefully that will help you. On the 20th, we'll go over those questions. And I also have put them up on the um, canvas so you can look at them. And then the 22nd, we've got our test. So it's coming down the pike really fast. Yep. Uh, where do I go? Forgot to open this up in PowerPoint. Sorry, guys. Take just a second. All right. So here we go, time to review chapters one through five. So I picked off the things that would be on the test to review. So first thing we need to review is chapter one. It's all about matter and measurement. Um, remember that matter can be broken into two substances, mixtures and pure substances. Pure substances go to elements and um, compounds and mixtures go to heterogeneous and homogeneous. Okay. As we look at it, you need to be able to do scientific notation, backwards and forwards. So if it's decimal, you need to be able to put in scientific notation. So if we're looking at this first one, your decimal is right here to start with. You need to make sure you move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 to the left. And when you do that, you get this number. Okay. Um, on number two, what should we write? 8.9 times 10 to the 0. Okay, you do have to have times 10 to some number. 10 to the 0 is t like timesing it by 1. Okay, what about the next one? Everybody agree on that? You get it wrong. You know, anything, any zero after a number, after the decimal, you have to include. And you need to have it negative. Yeah, she said negative, but she didn't include the, this zero right here. So when you look at it on a test, you need to make sure, does that zero tell me how well I measured it? If it tells me how well I measured it, I include it in the scientific notation. If it just tells me how big or how small, don't include it. Okay? So the bottom one, what do, we, what do we put for the bottom one? Okay, 0 0.04 times 10 to the negative 4. Good. Okay, so you can see how this works. You need to be able to go backwards from that. I didn't show any backwards, but you need to go frontwards and backwards. Okay, yes? Um, on number 2, uh -huh. why is it 3.2? Oh, it should be 8.9. That's me, that's me time, or, thank you, should be 8.9. That's me copy and pasting and then not changing. Okay, because it said no need to move, and I said, but the number's wrong. But the number's wrong, yes. Okay, thank you. All right, so, the next part has to do with this. Anybody remember what this is? What? Okay. Density, right? Yep, density. And I told you to remember it because it's like a heart, right? Your little oh, dance when you're in love. Volume. There you go. <laughs> mass over volume, okay? So when you are given an, a problem, something like this, we need to be able to do mass over volume. And she will have you change one of them. Okay? So if I want to do mass over volume, that's pretty easy. Density here is going to equal the mass divided by volume, which is 64.52 grams, divided by 10.84 liters. But this asks for it to be put in milliliters. So I need to do a conversion, right? So in one liter, there are 1,000 milliliters. 
Then we can cancel out leaders. Remember the bottom needs to be in the parentheses. It also says to put it in grams. It is grams. Oh. So grams are there. They might give you kilograms and ask you to put it in grams, or grams and put it in kilograms, or they could give you milliliters and ask you to put it in liters. Just know you need to go back and forth. Yes? Do we get a note card? You get a note card one side. Yep, for the whole year. <laughs> no, nope, three inches by five inches. Okay, so we're going to be going over things. If you're not getting this, that would be something I would put on your note card. I'm going to be covering a little bit each day for the next three days, and then we'll do a review of the whole thing. Okay, so plugging this through the calculator, we should put 64.52. Um, and then divide it by parentheses, 10.84 times 1,000. Please be careful with this on conversion. Either convert it before you put it in the density or make sure you've got it in the right place because the biggest common mistake I see is putting that 1,000 on top where it shouldn't be. Okay? All right, so let's see. Does anybody have a calculator got an answer for me? I will be posting these videos, so if you want to go back over them, you can. Okay. Is it? Never mind. What do we get? 0 0.0055. Just 5.9? Okay, and so because we have four significant figures, we should have two more after this. Oh, 952. 952. And because it's less than 1,000, we need to put in scientific notation. So we would write it like this, and the units would be grams per milliliter. And my board is not working over here in the corner, sorry. Okay, any questions with how to do that? If it's bigger than 1,000 or less than 1,000, you'll probably see the answer in scientific notation. So make sure you know how to read it in scientific notation. Remember that the test is all multiple choice. So the answer will be there. You just got to discern which one it is. And she will give you, she will, she will give you the, she will, she will do this without this in here and give you the answer because if you're working fast through a test and you don't see convert. Okay, so just make sure you're really careful. Go slow enough that you read the question and know what you're supposed to answer it. Okay? All right. Next one is isotopes, chapter two. So that was all that was in chapter one. Chapter two is on isotopes. We've been working with isotopes throughout the year, so hopefully it's not a big deal. Um, there are 12 isotopes of carbon. She might choose a different, uh, she will choose a different element on the periodic table. I'm just showing you with carbon. And the average is 12.11. Which isotope, by using the average atomic mass, was probably in most abundance? Okay, look at it again. You're given all those 12 isotopes, and the average mass of all those isotopes is 12.011. 12. It makes it simple, okay? Don't make it too hard. Carbon 12, because the average mass is closest to that one. So if you look at that, if the average mass is close to that, I probably have more of that isotope. Okay? Everybody okay with that? Okay. <laughs> I saw that. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, so here's a whole bunch of isotopes. And she'll give you a problem like this, too. Determine um, if the following isotopes are possible, number one. And if not, why? Okay? She'll have explanations. Okay, so let's look at the first one. 1840 AR. Is it possible? What is the bottom number? Yeah, but what does the num bottom number represent? It's the atomic number. So is first thing I do is I look at the bottom number. Is it the, bo is it the atomic number on the periodic table? 
No, this one is not the atomic number on the, uh, which one is? Yeah, but what is argons? 18. So these are actually probably flipped. Let's look at the mass of argon. 40, that could be an isotope, right? So these two are flipped. That's why it can't be, right? If you, if you sort of remember the bottom number always has to be smaller than the top number, you're, you're good, okay? So now on B, okay, look at B. You find it? And she'll do ones that you might not know where they are in the periodic table. You might have to look for a minute. But if you look for number 22, if it's not that, then you know it's the problem. Does that make sense? Okay, so it is 22 SC. No. So that's a problem right there. It's not the right symbol. Um, and because it's not the right symbol, who knows if that top number is right or not, right? So that's, that's a problem there. Let's look at number letter C. Okay, it, is, it could possibly be a, an isotope. 43 is technetium, and 90, 102 is close to what the average is. If so it could be an isotope. It doesn't have to be the exact mass, right? Because that's an average of all the different isotopes. Okay, what about um, D? What's wrong with this one? Okay, it's the wrong one. That probably needs to be flipped, right? So if I look at BE, BE has a mass about 9, and it's number 4. So they flipped them. So make sure you're careful with that, okay? Just remember the top number has to be the bigger one, and it's usually about 2 times, okay? Next one, Chapter 3. This is all about bond, James Bond, right? No. Um, metal and a nonmetal. It's a give and take bond, okay? It's one will give an electron, one takes an electron. One becomes positive, one becomes negative. All right? Whoa, I went a little fast there. Okay, so you need to be able to look at two elements, be able to predict their charges, and put them together correctly. So let's go through this. Magnesium. What's the symbol for magnesium? Mg. What is a possible charge for magnesium? Plus two, good. Phosphate, what is phosphate? Say it louder. PO4, and what's the charge on phosphate? Four. How, how, it's a negative three. It's three away from being a noble gas. That was a little trick, remember that? So knock out oxygen and fluorine, slide that front top row over, so nitrogen's right next to neon, and then however many away from that being a noble gas, that's what the charges are, are negative. That's when we add oxygens to them, okay? So how would this go together in a formula? So Mg will go first, good. Then how many do I need? Three, and what goes next? In parentheses, right, because I need more than one. Good. And how many do I need? Okay, what do I call this? Magnesium. What? Phosphate. This one's really easy. We don't have to do much to it. Just smash them together. Okay, let's look at the next one. Aluminum. What, what do I put down for aluminum? Al. What charge? That's part of the slide. Once you pass carbon, you start going positive and go back down. Plus three, plus three. Carbon is a plus or minus four. So when you get to aluminum, it's plus three. What about sulfur? It's an S, good. Minus two, okay, how many aluminums do I need? And how many sulfurs? What's the name of this? Aluminum, I heard it, sulfide, good, remember changing the last name to IDE, okay, so she might put there aluminum sulfur, something like that, for, and forget to change the ending, so be careful watching that. Okay, what about rubidium? We're just going to do a whole bunch of these. This covers a few, few um, questions, RB, what, plus one, 
and solve for what we did up above, negative 2, so formula is going to be RB2S, that sounds like a R2D2 or something like that. What do I name it? Rubidium sulfide, good. Okay, bottom one, potassium. Okay, plus one. Make sure, you know, they love to give potassium because people think it's P, and they like to give sodium because people think it's S. It's not, so be careful. Arsenic? A-R. A-S. And what charge would it be? Negative three. Okay, what would the formula be then? Okay, three A-S, and the name? Okay, everybody feel comfortable with this? This is like review, but there are a few questions that come out of that. So I put them all in one page, okay? So the slide is boron, aluminum, gallium plus three, zinc plus two, silver plus one. Okay, so it's like a little kid's slide. Well, it's, you know, one of the little... Um, what is it called? The little plastic slides that have the whole, the, the big slide, sides up, you know, so and then they just have a little teeny slide. <laughs> okay, next one. You need to be able to look at these and see if they're put together correctly. So, let's break this down. Sodium had what charge? Look at where it is on the periodic table. Plus one, it's in the first column. This is an organically written, but it's still acetate. What charge does it have? This one's get one you got to memorize. You got to put on your card. It's a negative one. So is this formula put together correctly? No, plus one minus one. I don't need three minus ones to go with a plus one. So I shouldn't need this or that. They should just smash together. Okay, let's look at the next one. Magnesium has what charge? Plus two. Nitrogen has what charge? Negative three. Is it put together correctly? Yes, because I have a plus six and a negative six adds to zero. Good. Okay, next one. BA, what charge? Plus two, HCO3. If I can't remember, remember oxygen and fluorine, knock them out, slide that first row over. Carbon would be how many away? Negative two, but I have a plus one with a hydrogen. So negative two plus one, it would make it a negative one. Is that put together right? And if I can't remember that plus, I could also always do, there's a plus one here. And this right here is a negative 2. And I could see if they added to 0, and they don't, right? Because I have plus 2 plus 1 is plus 3. Minus 2, I've still got a plus 1. You see that? Okay, let's do the next one. Potassium, what charge? Plus 1. Sulfite, what charge? Again, look up, up there. How far is sulfur? I don't know for sure. Negative 2. So I have... 3 plus 1, and I have 2 negative 2s. Does that equal 0? It does not equal 0. It equals what? Negative 1. Okay, so I can see real quickly I am not right. Okay, on the next one, strontium. What is strontium's charge? Plus 2. And what is nitrate's charge? Say it again louder. Okay, remember, knock out oxygen and fluorine. Minus one. So is this put together correctly? No. Because I'm putting oxygen on all the others when I make a polyatomic. And fluorine doesn't do groups. 
So when this, this is like the cheater way to find the polyatomic charges. So when I knock out oxygen and fluorine, I put oxygen with the other things there, and I slide that top row over, and that gives me the charges. So anything in this first column, which would include nitrogen, would be negative 1. Anything in the second column, which would include carbon, would be negative 2. Anything in the next column with oxygen would be negative 3. So it's just a quick cheater way to do that rather than have to write all of them down on my card because I might not have room. Okay? So this one should have been written, SR, I guess I should have been showing you the right way to write them as we went along. So this one up here should have just been NaCH3COO. This one right here should have been K2SO3. And this one right here should have been BA, parentheses, HCO3, parentheses 2. Okay, let's do the last one. This one's harder. You need to know that copper can only be a plus 1 or a plus 2. And so I know that this is plus 1 or plus 2. What's phosphate? What charge is phosphate? Negative 3. Well, negative 3 times 3 is going to get me negative 6. There's no way copper can do that. Does that make sense? So I either have Cu3PO4 or I have Cu, whoops, Cu, um, I can't do this. 2 times 3 is 6, so 3PO4, 2. Okay, so if it was a plus 1, it would be this. If it was a plus 2, it would be this. So you just need to be able to look and see, does that formula make sense? If it doesn't, then it's not right. She might say which of the following formulas is correct, and you have to go through each one and see which one's wrong. Or she might, she loves to do that. Which one is not, or which one, you know, she likes to put that, watch that not word. Okay, next one. Electronegativity. Help me remember this. What's the most electronegativity on the periodic table? Fluorine. What's the least? Francium. So I am trying to find the ones that are closest to fluorine and farthest. So of these, let's take and do it. Um, molybdenum. So that's number 42. I'm just going to put the numbers at the top of it to help us. Cadmium is number 48. Indium is number 49. Ruthenium is somewhere on there. It's 104. Tellurium is 52. Arsenic is 33. And cesium is 55. So that's the first thing I would do if it were me, and she gives me a list, and I've got to try and orient them. And then I would say, okay, which ones are on the same row? Because we had a bunch on the same row. Um, cadmium and indium was molybdenum. Yep, molybdenum was on the same row. Um, tellurium, was it on the same row? Yes, it was. Tellurium was on the same row. So I can put those in order right now because going across, those are going to be in the same one. So I'm going to leave a space in between each of them in case I have to put something in there. Then we look at Ruthifordium. Ruthifordium is down at the bottom. And cesium is also down on the bottom left. You can see them over there, 103 and 55 on the left-hand side of the periodic table. Which one's closer to francium? Cesium. So cesium is going to be my lowest. And then ruthifordium. So I've taken care of those. Last one is arsenic. And I come back, and arsenic's a row above all the others. So it is the highest electronegativity of all those. So see how I did that? Sort of made more sense of it. So you've got to, it's got to be diagonal. So are we okay with that? Anybody need more help with this? Okay. Okay, we're on to chapter four, covalent bonding. Okay, covalent bonding, remember, is sharing. Sharing is caring, or they're slightly polar, okay? Um, which water is slightly polar? Actually, it's very polar. All right, so we're going to write the chemical formulas for this. This should be very easy, because why? It tells you how many of each, right? 
So dinitrogen, yes. N2, tetrachloride, Cl4, carbon monoxide, CO, right? Mon meaning one. Okay, selenium, tetraselenium trioxide, Se4, O3, disulfur pentoxide, S2, O5. Okay. I wish you would have sent us up there to do that one. <laughs> you like that one, huh? Okay, so that's another question on the test. Okay. Um, something like that. Okay, how many valence electrons do the following poly um, polyatomics possess? So now you've got to think. This one, just remember Lewis dot. This is what she's testing here is Lewis dot. So how many did nitrogen have around it? Look at where nitrogen is, knock out the D, don't count the D, don't count the um, F, just how many to get across to nitrogen on that row. Just to get on that row, not the top, but just on that row, remember that? Okay. Now oxygen, how many to get across to oxygen? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I have five here, I have six here. Then I look at how many of each I have. Well, I have two oxygens, and negative means I have one more. Does that make sense? So this negative here means I have plus one. So how many total do I have? 18. Done. Okay, quickly do the other three. Let me see if you can do them. Wait, I just had a question. Yes. Um, so where did you get the nitrogen being? Oh. Nitrogen's right here, and you just count on that row to get to nitrogen. Don't count the D, don't count the F. Okay, all right. Okay, so go ahead and do this. Plus means I take away a nitrogen, or take away an electron. Negative means I add them. So we'll do one at, one at a time. We'll do the far one first, the MnO4 minus. Do that one first. So remember, D does not count. F does not count. So don't count D or F. So if it's in the D or F, how many does it have? That's it. Okay, we're doing MnO4 negative first. Don't count D, don't count F. Just how many in the S or P to get to it. Even if it's in the D, it only has two in its outer shell. S and P are the outermost shell. So anything in the D or F only has two. So the minute I see it's in D or F, I just put down two. In the D. It's in the D. The sunken part is the D. This is the F. So if it's in the D or the F, it just has a 2S. That's it. Okay, so doing this one really quickly, we just sort of talked this through. MN is in the D, so it only has two electrons. We already figured out that oxygen has six, and we have four oxygens, six electrons, plus we have one extra. So how many total electrons do I have? Two plus 24 plus one equals 27 electrons. Done. Okay, do the bottom two. <laughs> We understanding this? <clears throat> the easy way two to do, remember to be a uh, noble gas, it'll have eight. So if it's one away, seven. If it's two away, six. If it's three away, five, four, three. So
So you don't count the sunken part. Do you always have to start over here? Yep, you're always just going to be on that one row that it's on. So phosphorus would have five, right? So five electrons plus oxygen we already know has six plus we have an extra three gives me total of how many? Thank you. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> 26 electrons. Done. Okay. We ready for the next one? Not quite? So nitrogen has five. Hydrogen has one. Right? So we have 5 plus 4, but the plus is actually taking one away. So we have how many? 8 electrons. Okay, we understand this? Understand it good? Okay, easy question if you know what's asking, right? Easy way to get it right. Okay, chapter 5, all about chemical reactions. Okay, so... Working our way through the year. We're halfway through second term now. <laughs> okay. All right. So you need to classify each of these and you need to balance them. So let's classify it first. Do you remember what they were? Okay. So I'm going to bring over my little cards here to help us remember. Okay. We had boy meets girl synthesis. Remember this? We had... They get in a fight, decomposition. Okay, we have, we blow them up, that's combustion. We get CO2 and water. Uh huh. Single displacement, couple, girl tr trades out or boy trades out. Okay, you always have an element by itself. And the last one, double displacement or what I call dance disaster, couple and a couple, new couple, new couple. Okay. All right, so what's number one? Double displacement, so dance disaster, right? So you have a couple or a compound and a compound and makes a new compound, new compound. Okay, balancing it. Remember how to balance? Okay, so underneath here, underneath the arrow, P, B, C, L, A, G, N, and... H and O, our sec, H is second to last, O is always last. Okay, so going side to side. One lead, one lead. Two chlorines, one chlorine. Put a two, now it has two. A, G, one, two. So now I come back here and put a two. Two. Two nitrogens, two nitrogens, six oxygens, six oxygens done. Okay, so I'm going to help you with the next one as far as, um, not really help you, I'm going to, we're first going to decide what type. Say it louder. Synthesis, good. Or combination. Synthesis or combination, they'll know both ways. I cannot spell, it's okay. Combination, making it one thing. So synthesis is putting it together to one. So here we have a couple and a couple going to one, B1. So it's like a divorced family with just the mom and kids and the dad and kids and Brady Bunch, they get together. Okay? What do we need to balance it? It is balanced. We don't have to do anything. Yay! We like those kind. Okay, next one. <laughs> this is also a synthesis. Good. Two things making one. This one is single, single making a couple. Up here we had like the mom and kids, dad and kids making one. Okay, so this is synthesis. I'm just going to go like this. That's this one too. <laughs> I don't want to write it again. Okay, bottom one, number four. What made you say that? So an element by itself is a key here. If I have an element by itself and a compound, it's going to be single displacement. Okay, be careful though, if the element's oxygen, it could be combustion. Okay, so this is a single displacement. 
Is it balanced? Okay, quickly balance it. Let me see what you th do with balancing it. It is balanced. <laughs> so two hydrogens, two hydrogens, one S, one S, four oxygens, four oxygens, one FE, one FE. We'll get to it. So what's number one? Combustion. How do you tell the difference between single displacement and combustion? Single displacement, you're going to have a single element on both sides. Does this have a single element on both sides? No. Combustion is always going to give me water and carbon dioxide or water and carbon monoxide if it's incomplete combustion. We talked about that with um, carbon monoxide poisoning. Okay, so this is combustion. Please be careful when you're trying to decide what it is. Combustion and combination look a lot alike. Okay, so if she gives you a combination and you choose combustion, that's probably not a good thing. Or if you give a, you a combustion and you choose combination, that's not a good thing. So look at the word combination or combustion. Combustion will, will have a carbon compound plus oxygen giving me carbon dioxide and water. So I've burned something up. Is it balanced? No. And this one takes a little bit of time, so let's do it together. Down the center, we put Cho. So on the left-hand side, we have six carbons. On the right-hand side, we have one. So we put a six in front of the carbon, getting six. On the left-hand side, we have 12 hydrogens. On the right-hand side, we have two. So we put a six, getting 12. On the left-hand side, we have two oxygens. On the right-hand side, we have 6 plus 12, giving me 18. So 9 in front of this one, and we're done. Remember, though, that little half trick, if I end up with an odd number, times through by 2. Okay? All right. Next one, what type? Decomposition. It's falling apart. So if one thing falls apart, you're going to get decomposition. It can fall, in fall apart to more than two things. It can fall apart to three and four things. Okay? So just know that if one thing goes to many, it's decomposition. Is it balanced? No. What do I need to do? There's only one thing I have to do. You got two nitrogens here, two nitrogens here, four hydrogens, four hydrogens, three oxygens, one plus two is three oxygens. Okay, next one, what do we have? Single displacement, key thing here, two elements by themselves, right? So single displacement. Is it balanced? Okay, what do I need to do to balance it? Two where? KBR and KCL. Okay, bottom one, what type is it? I heard double and I heard single. Double, because I don't have any elements by itself. Remember, single is I'm single by myself, single element. Okay, so this is double displacement. Is it balanced? It is not balanced. So I'm going to put it up here because I don't want to scoot. I don't want to stoop, sorry. S, B, A, C, L, and we'll put O on this side. Okay, so AL, on the left we have 2, on the right we have 1, so I put a 2, I've got 2. On the left I have 3, on the right I have 1, so I'll put a 3. On the left I have 1, on the right I have 3, so I put a 3. On the left I have 6, on the right I have 6, and I'm done. Oh, nope, we've got to check oxygen. On the left I have, we have a problem. Pretend that's an F4. 
Now it's balanced. I did a typo. <laughs> There's a typo. Okay, so on the left we should have 12, on the right we should have 12. I did a typo. I know. No, you can't do that on your test. Sorry, that was a typo. I was typing this fast last night because I'm like, oh crap, I don't have the review for you guys during class. So, all right, there's some errors. It's okay. All right, so now this becomes, this becomes something that you need to make sure that you are careful with. It doesn't take long. You don't have to be exact in order to get the answer. So this, I'm going to show you on the first one how to do it, and then I want you to do the others really quick. So you just want to have an about how much does each of these substances weigh. So I go to sodium, and sodium is about 23. So I go 2 times 23, and oxygen's about 16, and I get the mass. And so 2 times 23 is 46, 46 plus 10 is 56, plus 6 more is 62. So about a 62. Would you guys do the rest real fast? Just, uh, you don't have to put all the thing in, just about. You just need to know about how much it weighs. You don't want to waste your time on getting it exact because it's not asking you that. It's, we'll do something else with it in just a minute. Okay. That makes sense. So, like on carbon, carbon's 12.011, but I'm just going to go 5 times 12 plus hydrogen's 1.008, but I'm just going to go 10 times 1. Oxygen's 15.999, but I'm just going to go 4 times 16. I'm going to get an answer. I just need about how much it is. Okay, so quickly find me the about how much it is. 3 times 1, yeah, the white, plus 32, I think that's 32, nope, 30, plus 4 times 16, give me that answer, 2 times, I think it's 40, yep, plus 32, plus 4 times 16 gives me, Okay, we got some answers for me. You got this one? 82. What's this one? 175. What's this one? Okay. That's how many grams are in one mole. And what do we know about one mole of a substance? It has Avogadro's number worth of particles in it, right? Which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. It's asking me here, which sample contains the largest number of molecules? That's Avogadro's number in a mole, right? It's coming down, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I should probably write it down. If you need it. So if, all you've got to remember is Avogadro's number is how many, how many molecules there are in a mole. They're not... They're not having you calculate. You know, they're not having you calculate it. You just have to be able to do this much of it. So you're going to have a periodic table. You can do this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what you're doing here now is that is how many grams are in one mole of this, which is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, right? Molecules. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. And I could write that on every single one of these, right? But they only gave me 25 grams of each. So which one of these is going to have more molecules in that 25 grams? The lightest one. Because the lightest one, this has about half, so this will have about 3 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. This one I'd have to take 25 divided by 175. That's going to be a lot less. Does that make sense? Okay, so the lightest one has the most, the heaviest one has the least. So if she's asking for the least, you're going for the heaviest. If she's asking for the most, you're going for the lightest. Okay, so she just, instead of having you do the whole mole map, she wants you to think through which one would have the most molecules, which would have the least. In other words, I have 25 pounds of elephant and 25 pounds of mice. Which one gives me more mice or elephants? Well, I'm going to have more mice at 25 pounds, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, because the elephant doesn't weigh 
Well, well, elephant weighs a lot more than 25 pounds, so I might get one part of his leg, you know, kind of thing, or part of his trunk. Does that make sense? Everybody okay with this? Because I want to make sure you get that one right, because that was a little odd the way she asked it. I can make another one up real quick. Um, so say we had 50 grams of the following. We had, um, I'm just going to push this off to the side down here. So 50 grams of the following. Um, H3PO4. Oh, we already did H3PO4. Let's do um, H2SO4. Let's do sodium chloride. And <laughs> KMNO4 and one more um, BACL2. And I want the one that has the least number of molecules for those. So quickly add up real fast each one. You don't have to be exact, just do a quick add. Oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> You're putting the hydrogen in for oxygen. Yeah. So one times two. <laughs> it's like there's no two times oxygen up there. <laughs> So I want the one that has the least number of molecules for this one. Because I heard this one, put it up. This is 98 <laughs> grams. 58, K. Okay. And do we have this one, KMNO4? 78. 78? Oh, 157? I got three different. Let's everybody do that one more, one more time. Potassium, about 39 or 40. Either one will work there. MN is 54 and 4 times 16. Yeah, 157. 157 going twice. <laughs> okay. And barium chloride. Did we get that one? What one? 207. Okay, so which one had the least amount of molecules? Barium had the least. So if we had to choose the least, because it had the most weight. Uh, least. So which one would have had the most? 98. I mean 58. NACL would have the most, okay? And you could also put it in order which had the most to which had the least or which had the least to which had the most, okay? Easy what you know how, right? Okay, so going forward. All right, now we're working in oxidation and reduction. Who remembers an element by itself has what charge? Z zero. So really quickly, I can take and put zeros above anything that is by itself. Then I want to go through and I want to put the uh, charges on those things that I know. So I know NO3 as a group, since it stays as NO3 on this side and NO3 on this side, that charge is not going to change. So what was NO3's charge? Knock out, slide over, minus one. So if it's a minus one and I have two of them, that means nickel here is a plus two. So I'm not worried about nitrate because it stayed the same on both sides. So it's a minus one. So again here, magnesium would be a plus two. So then I attach what's changing from side to side. Nickel changed, magnesium changed, right? Which one was oxidized? If you don't remember, Leo the lion says grr or oil rig. Those were things that we used to help remember what was what. Leo the lion says Gersh, so Leo, 
loss of electrons is oxidation. Grr, gain of electrons is reduction. Or oil rig, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. Which one's which? Careful. Electrons are negative, so if I'm gaining electrons, I'm becoming more growly. That's why it's grr. Gain of electrons, grr, is reduction. I'm becoming more negative. Okay? Nickel, nickel is reduced. This one's becoming more positive, so it's oxidized. So it's like becoming clean. I think oxyclean. Ah, become more positive when I'm clean. Okay? Oxidized. So that's how I remember it. Leo the line says grr. I remember grr is negative, and it's gaining weight, which is electrons, become more negative. Yes? So what was the oil, rig? oil rig, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. Oh, oxidation is loss. So Leo, loss of electrons is oxidation. I like Leo Lyons says grr because it tells me what I'm losing. The other one doesn't tell me what I'm losing, so I, I get confused on the charge. Does that make sense? So if I'm losing electrons, I become more positive. I'm oxidized. I'm getting oxyclean. Grr. I'm gaining electrons. I'm becoming reduced. Grr. Becoming more negative. All right. So let's look at this next one. SO4 stays together. So because it stays together, I know that's not going to be the thing that changes. Who remembers what SO4 is charges? Almost. Negative 2. If you look at where sulfur is, it's 2 away from being a noble gas. Negative 2. Okay, so that means, well, aluminum and sodium have specific charges. What are they? Aluminum's part of the slide. Plus 3. And sodium's in the first column. Plus 1. Okay, so now we're attaching things that change. Sodium is changing. Aluminum is changing. Who is being oxyclean? Becoming more positive. NA is because it's going more positive from left to right. Okay? <laughs> so think oxyclean. I'm happy when I'm ha clean. I become more positive. And then, which is becoming reduced? AL. All right. So you've got to be able to do that. You've got to be able to tell what's oxidized, what's reduced. Okay? If I, have a con if I have a reaction and it has an element by itself, it is an oxidation reduction reaction. Okay? It has to be an oxidation reduction reaction. Because on the other side, it won't be by itself. So it changed charge. And if one thing changes charge, another thing has to. Because whenever I'm oxidized, I have to be reduced. Whenever I'm reduced, I have to have an oxidize. I have to have some place for those electrons to go. Okay? All right, going forward. Now your turn. All by yourself. Here's three. Determine what's oxidized, what's reduced. Try it on your own. You can do this. You can. I think you can. While you're doing that, I'm going to try and get some of these snowflakes down. Let me know when you have... From the way beginning of the year, yep. I forgot Is H what? Mercury can be a lot of different things. What is it with? Oxygen. Ah, uh, what's oxygen's charge? So it has to be a positive too.
Okay, are we ready? We're ready? Oxidize, you're happy, you're more positive when you're clean. Okay, let's see. Let's have some help up front. Let's do. Uh, okay. Okay. Who's going to do number three? Go volunteer or voluntold? I got one more volunteer that I need to get up there. Any element by itself is zero. Yep. So with the last one. Uh-huh. So you start with O2 and you end up with O2 and O. So uh -huh. where does the like which one are you using? Both of them will go to the same charge. Right? Yeah. So it doesn't matter which one you go to, because both times it's reduced. It became more negative, right? Okay, I need one more for the bottom, guys. Who's going to volunteer for the bottom? Come on, guys, that's the easy one. It is. Because it doesn't need to be oxidized or reduced, huh? No. It's good. Okay, I'll do it. Here. This is really easy because any element by itself is zero, right? The rule for oxygen is negative two. Hydrogen's plus one when it's in a group. That leaves carbon that's changing. So carbon here's a negative four, positive four. Didn't really even have to think about it. Oxygen, it doesn't matter if you show it going here or here, it still goes to negative two. So zero to negative two is grr, reduced. And that leaves carbon here to here. And it's going more positive, so it's oxidized. Let's go back and check the other two. Um, positive to zero. Ooh, we've got these backwards. OK, so z negative to a positive, I'm becoming more positive, because this is zero. So this is oxidized, becoming more clean. I'm not negative anymore. And this one should be reduced. Let's go on number two. Plus four to minus three, yes, reduce, becoming more negative. Oxidized, zero to plus two, becoming more positive, yes. Okay, we okay? Just remember, oxy, clean, positive, grr, negative, okay? All right, so how do catalysts work? I sing, matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match, and this is how I turned out, yes. Gain of electrons reduction. I liked that cartoon when I saw it. When I put in Matchmaker, I thought, that's funny. Wait, so gain of electrons? Gain of electrons is reduction. And oxidate, Leo is loss of electrons is oxidation. OK, so remember these, the activation curves? OK, all you got to remember is what does a catalyst do? It lowers the activation energy. What does a catalyst do? the activation energy. There we go. So that's it. Next time we'll go over 6 through 10. So the rest of the time in class is yours.
to work on whatever you feel you need to go over. So you can start making your 3x5 card with what we talked about today. You can go over whatever you need to go over. You can go over Learn Smarts Labs, blah, 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 blah. blah. Make sure you've got your labs at 80% by the 14th. Okay, labs to 80% by the, the 14th. Okay, and we'll do 6 through 10 next time, and then 11 through 13, then I'll give you the review, and you'll have it for the weekend, and then we come back, and we go over it, and then we take a test. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll be telling you how many questions are in each part as we go through. So like this part right now, there's 13 questions on what we just went over. It's the 27th. Okay. I can't remember. It's oh, it's Memorial Day, yes. I was like, I don't know what day that is. <laughs> and the, the more awesome thing is, on that Tuesday, Wednesday, it's short and schedule. We're done by noon. That makes me so happy. And we'll just make ice cream. Um, we'll do a freezing point depression lab as a review <clears throat> that day. And I'm going to have you guys bring the stuff for it because I've already paid for it out of ours, so we don't have it. So we'll talk about it when it gets closer. Okay? All right. Your turn.